This is Hello Hockey with Sean Bell and Tom Gazzola. Welcome to Hello Hockey on this Saturday. How are you? I hope you're doing well. Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell, YouTube Trev. With you inside the Edmonton Sports Talk Studios in West Edmonton as we get set for a busy Saturday in the National Hockey League. It continues to be a super busy time in the hockey world and, of course, uh, a somber anniversary today, uh, six years, uh, the humble Broncos crash. And uh, you and I, Belzy, have uh, people we know. Yep that were uh, on that bus, and one of them uh, is gracious enough to be joining us later on today, Tyler Smith, yep. and uh, we look forward to catching up with Smitty, who's a, a friend of ours. So, uh, yes, uh, we acknowledge that, and uh, man, oh, man, I don't want to rekindle too many bad memories. No, that was... But, uh, uh, yeah, we yeah. should acknowledge it right off the hop here. Yeah, well, I, I completely completely agree. Yeah. Yeah, it's... Um, it was a very challenging time, very tough time in the, in the hockey world, and... Um, Lots of emotion around it. I, I honestly, I remember exactly where I was when it happened. Yeah, and I was sitting in, in Nate, and we had our uh, award ceremony. And then all of a sudden, you know, there was a couple of people that got up and were crying. And then there was this big pause. And um, I remember hearing that the crash happened. And obviously, at the time, I didn't know Smitty at the time, but I knew, mm -hmm. you know, um, the Joseph family very well. Um, yeah, there was obviously a bunch of guys that. Played for the Spruce Grove Saints, and like I immediately, like I, I don't even think I thought about. It. I just literally called Joey right away, and yep. uh, yeah, it was. Uh, he was on. He was in his truck with his wife Andrea, and they were ripping, ripping to Saskatchewan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just a very very tough time. So absolutely good to acknowledge it. Yep. And uh, you know, for those for the survivors. I know that they're all doing really well, and uh, it, it's remarkable to see what they're doing with their lives. So it's it's very very impressive. Uh, one of those uh, people is Tyler Smith, and uh, we will hear from Smitty. We're not gonna we're not gonna pry. We're not gonna get into rekindling those memories, yep. but we we will definitely uh, hear from a well spoken, well thought out man uh, who is using his experience in a positive way to help others now. Yep. Uh, through his own initiative. So, yes, uh, it is a, a, a somber day in the hockey world, a somber anniversary, I should say. But, uh, you know, we uh, certainly acknowledge that, and I look forward to catching up with Smitty, who I haven't talked to in quite some time. We'll also hear from Johnny Boychuk from the New York Islanders uh, player development side. His Islander is in a big game tonight as they try to chase down a playoff spot. Uh, it's crazy what's going on in the Eastern Conference right now, Belzy. You've got the Penguins who are alive all of a sudden. The Islanders are in the third spot in the Metro. They rattled off three straight wins. They play tonight, take it on the Nashville Predators, who've been a wagon, as some people like to say. And It's such a weird reference. I need to I get that off my chest. Like People are talking about a wagon. Like... Last time I checked, wagons aren't super solid. I don't understand the term mid, sus, dust, bussin. We've got Zach all, to come who works here. All of those make here. more sense than calling a good hockey team a wagon. Like, once again, Goat makes wagons sense. aren't super solid. So I don't I understand know. the reference. But, hey, what do I know? Yeah, anyway. The Preds are playing very good hockey, to just break it down simply. And uh, they get the Islanders, who are looking to make it four straight wins. Uh, the Lightning clinched the playoff spot. Philly, uh, John Tortorella had this really heartfelt, sincere moment with the media earlier this week. Good for him, but it does not make, for, make up for any of the other times where he's an absolute you-know-what to people. And so, all right, John, lead your team to victory. Two, five, and three. I love the fact are. that, like, you're so fired up with this one. Uh, like, I know your feelings. I know your feelings. But it's kind of funny. Why? I, I like, I like, I, I honestly like needling you with this one with Tortorella because this why? is where you get fired up. 
This is your red button. My red button. This is your red button. Go on. I mean, every time. Listen, the other day we were sitting at local. Those was two weeks ago. And I mildly, and I mean mildly, defended Tortorella because I knew and understood why he sat Couturier and why he was like, media, I don't care what you guys have to say. And I watched you turn yourself into a mental pretzel because you were so fired up. I, this is your red button. I love it. Whatever. Everybody's got one. Whatever. Uh, okay, so Johnny Boychuk will join us. David Pagnotta a little bit. Later on in hour two, and then Tyler Smith, of course. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to ignore this red button thing that I have no idea what Sean's referencing. Yeah, I'm well known. <laughs> you can text us, as always, 780-218-9999. And, of course, if you're watching on our EST YouTube channel, get into the nasty chat as we get set for a big weekend in the world of hockey. Uh, we're having some fun there. Of course, this is the morning coffee brought to you by the good folks at Fox Coffee. Mm, that is good coffee. Check them out. Two blocks south of Rogers Place on 104th Street with the main location opening soon. In the meantime, they've got their pop-up shop selling coffees, donuts, 10 varieties of coffee beans that they roast. And uh, I went in today to pick up our coffees, and the yep. donuts are phenomenal, by the way. Uh, Jarrell gave me a quick peek at the main area. How close is it to being done? Uh, he says a couple more months. Okay. But the building, he said, was... Constructed in 1911. Oh. And he goes, yeah, it's been interesting because, like, the finishes, it looks, it has, like, a vintage vibe, but everything's relatively new. Uh, a lot of the accessories, like, they have a safe that was donated to them by a, a bank and thing <laughs> is huge. And he goes, That's unreal. and then that, that display shelf uh, has been, this guy bought it 60 years ago and um, – it fits right into the whole motif. It's got like a very like speakeasy kind of yep. early 1900s look to it and very fitting with the age of the building. Um, and and Jarrell's like, yeah, and then like all the furniture is kind of antique or yep. rustic. We've had like pretty cool. lighting fixtures donated. I'm, I'm like, oh my God. And then it just looks awesome. So he says, the, and he was telling me about the sandwiches and the focaccia bread that they decided on for the sandwiches. And then on top of that, you can get the coffee, which is always great. So they're doing awesome work over there. Morning coffee here on Hello Hockey brought I love to you it. by Fox Coffee. There you go. Two Absolutely blocks south of Rogers Place. Delicious, by the Speaking way. Speaking of speakeasies, mm -hmm. we just did a suit fitting. Oh, yes, we did. That little uh, cupboard that basically is like, literally yes. looks like a speakeasy, uh, was unbelievable. Like that place... I didn't really know what I, like, I knew what I was getting myself into. Like, I knew, you know, I've been to Henry Singer. I've been to those places. Mm -hmm. TJ Maxx. TJ Maxx. But there was, uh, there was just a really nice feel at, uh, at Modern Measure. Which are proud sponsors yeah. of Hello Hockey. And that's something we'll get into. We will get into A little that. bit later on. But uh, we got to spend some time with Jared and Richie, uh, which we'll uh, share some more about in a little bit, but that yeah. was really cool. And it does have a speakeasy vibe it does. It with was, that one was, cupboard. That one cupboard was sweet. They are, they are sharp. They Just are bad. sharp. All right. Text us your thoughts. Uh, the Oilers, a big win yesterday. They clinched their playoff spot. Uh, they take on the Calgary flames tonight. We'll have the pregame show myself, Matt Cassian and YouTube Trev at six thirty PM mountain time. And that'll be right here on Hello Hockey, or not Hello Hockey, on Edmonton Sports Talk. Belsey, some big games going on today as well. What do we got? Well, what do we got, Tom? Tampa Bay Lightning, Pittsburgh Penguins. Pittsburgh's alive all of a sudden. You've got Florida at Boston. That's the one that I'm at. Vancouver at I'm LA. After. That one to me Edmonton is one of the... at Calgary. Nah. I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Marquee matchup for me, Florida-Boston. Why? Just two juggernauts. Sitting atop the Eastern Conference, that's going to be big boy hockey, and I and I'm here to watch that because in the last week and a half to two weeks, across the National Hockey League, it's been big boy hockey that's been played. Right, and I'm not talking about fighting and all that kind of stuff. It's just the games are starting to pick up their intensity. They're getting that little bit more pace. Guys are like, "Okay, playoffs are right around the corner. We got to get into playoff mode," and I'm really enjoying the hockey right now. So I want to see Florida-Boston 
two teams that are like, hey, we're, we're the guys. We're the teams to beat. And they're both going to try to push each other around, and it's going to be a fantastic game. The Bruins have taken over a top spot in the Atlantic with 105 points. They've won three in a row, seven and three in their last 10. Florida, meanwhile, finally picked up a win, yep. was on the schneid a little bit. Uh, three, six, and one in its last 10. And they've fallen into second in the Atlantic with Toronto a, a distant third, and not so distant, it's six points back with 95 points. And then you've got that battle. You got the Metro Division, you got the Islanders sitting at 83 points, and Philly is at 83 points. You've got Washington at 82 points, the Red Wings at 82 points, and all of a sudden Pittsburgh with a win tonight if they beat Tampa, who clinched a playoff spot. Uh, the Penguins are right there in the mix when we had them left for dead, 6-2-2 two and two in the last 10. I Rattled off three straight. Crosby. Undertaker. Yeah. Rising from the depths. Right. Unbelievable. You can't count that guy out. What about Washington and Detroit and all of this? I've come on here multiple times and I've said that uh, hockey's not the same without Detroit being good. They've been good most of the Most year. of the year, but they're not at a point yet where I think they're going to be you know, challenging consistently in the playoffs. I think they're clearly they're getting better. They're getting to that point where, you know, the, the plan is continuing is, uh, is unfolding in front of our eyes, mm -hmm. but I'm okay. If they miss the only team, if I'm looking right now in the, in the, the Eastern conference, the only team that I'm like, meh is actually two who New York and Philly. The okay. Islanders. Okay. To me, like, the Islanders now are, they're almost the same as what Minnesota was back in the day. They're synonymous for boring hockey. Well, good thing Johnny's coming on it. Can't wait minutes. to talk to Johnny about that. Johnny, Why do you play boring hockey, Boring hockey, Johnny. Johnny. And Johnny wasn't boring when he played. No. So why did you join the most boring franchise in the NHL, Johnny? Because he was continuing his career in the game of hockey. That's all. Whatever. I can't say that to him. I would not, I'm going I would to. not say that to him. But it's true. Is that a Patrick Waugh thing? Is that a Lou Lamarello I think they're thing? actually becoming better with Patty Waugh. By but playing boring hockey? No, no, no. Patty Waugh is bringing them to a more up-tempo, aggressive style. Previously, mm -hmm. let's call it a good six-year span where it was like watching paint dry. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Am I wrong? Us. I I'm curious to hear what Johnny has to say about all of this. Although okay. he's on the development side of things, yeah, he can't talk about that. Sure, he can. What, what is he going to be like? You know what, Sean, Tom? Yeah, we do play boring hockey. What if he does? That phone's going to be ringing so quickly from Lou. Oh, Johnny, you think we play boring hockey? Yes. Just saying. Sean Bell does though. I do. Not Get now. In. With Patty Watt, it's been better. Okay. Okay. Get into the nasty chat, of course. Uh, let's go to some text really quickly. It's the, the morning coffee brought to you by Fox Coffee. Abutsky says, I love both Tom Gazzola and John Tortorella. Please don't make me choose between my two favorite Italians. Abutsky, you don't have to choose. You don't have to choose ever. You don't ever. have to choose. I just I find his antics ridiculous. Oh. I, Tell me more, Tom. No. Okay. So I'm not hitting my red button, evidently. Tell me more, Tom. No. we will just leave it. Okay. Look at Trev. He's laughing. He thinks this is hilarious. Because he knows it's true. He knows it's true. Uh, let's move on to Sean's All text. right, no. Tortorella, arguably the best coach in the NHL. Oh, stop it. Not even close. <laughs> He's a coach in the NHL. <laughs> It's not a red button, is it? <clears throat> Sean texts in. I think the wagon reference has to do with a runaway wagon. I've seen enough Western movies to realize when there's a runaway wagon. It's pretty hard to stop it. Oh, we're talking about one of those wagons? Okay, yeah. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you're trying to needle me to this uh, tortorella man. stuff. So good. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Let's see what we got in the nasty chat. Uh, good morning, uh, Joel. Hello, Big Uke. And uh, Larry watching in YVR at the airport. He says, waiting in Vancouver Airport. 
Let's go, Hello Hockey. Good morning, Larry. Hope you're doing well. Uh, T. Willison in the nasty chat says, How can one not like Torts? He tried to fight the entire Calgary team once. VR Montenegro. Hello, Mike, who was out yesterday at uh, Hudson's White Avenue where we did the pre and post game show. Uh, says, Belzy poking away. <laughs> Yeah, he really is. Okay, you talk about big boy hockey. You talk about uh, you know, T. Willison brings out the line brawl that happened in Vancouver between the Canucks and the Flames. What did you think of the line brawl between the Rangers and the Devils two seconds into the game? I thought it was fantastic. Me too. Because it was just kind of like one of those things where you had McDermott, you know, he was clearly unhappy the last time those two teams played. And so he gets on there talking about how he lost respect for Rempe and all this stuff. Mm hmm. Rempe's gone in there and just smacked them around. I yeah. think he, he's the first first player in league history to be kicked out of the game three times in a row against the exact same team. So he's basically come in, he's smacked them around a little bit. Yes. And then he's basically, he, he's picked his spot. And he's got them so fired up that they're like, okay, we're going to start a fourth line because we're going to set the tone. And then it's like, okay, sweet, here we go. Okay, what I love about what was the stat about Rempe? Three games played versus the Devils, like and been kicked out in all three. Yeah, he's been ejected from. I think he's played a total of five minutes. Yeah. What does he have? Forty-seven penalty minutes. Am I? Rem I'm trying to remember that that stat line correctly, but uh, absolutely amazing <laughs> the impact <laughs> that he's had. And did you ever deal with him when he was with Spruce Grove? No, I just missed him. Oh, you just yeah. missed him. Okay, yeah. just a giant human being. Fire. He's Mr. New York now. Yeah. They've got the Empire State Building. He's climbing like he's climbing the Empire, climbing the Empire State Building. It's actually a pretty funny t-shirt. Like this guy, I saw I saw something uh, a buddy of mine sent me a post uh, Sean Avery talking about it. And Sean Avery is obviously a, he's a different bird, but uh -huh. um when he talks about it it's actually hilarious and he's he is definitely on the side of Rempe and he's basically just sitting there talking about how, you know, the girls of New York need to be kissing Rempe on the cheek every single time he walks by because he is a hero to that place. But he's he's come in and he is he's added some serious snarl and sandpaper yeah. to that hockey team. Totally. And it's to the point where, you know, some of the leaders the older players, the leaders, they're actually following suit with Rempe. Like, Rempe's come in and it's just like, I'm not taking any nonsense, and I'm going at you. And all of a sudden now, like, some of these other guys are starting to, to follow that, and you're seeing this team, like, they're taking off a bit. Yeah. Like, I, I remember we, we talked about, was it last week, where Bissonette basically said if he, if he was the Leafs, he would tank so he doesn't have to play Boston or Florida. I'm looking at that comment more and more now and saying, I'm not sure playing New York is a better answer. No. I think it might be a worse answer. <clears throat> Three games played versus the Devils. 5.03 time on ice. 47 penalty minutes ejected from all three games. Amazing. Impressive. It's amazing. <laughs> all 10 guys kicked out. Amazing. <laughs> Two seconds At MSG. in. MSG. Two seconds in. Two seconds in. He goes toe-to-toe -to -toe -to -toe with McDermott at center ice. And that was a long fight, too. Yes, it was. Good for that kid. He Mr. New York. Yep. All right. Uh, 780 We've got Johnny Boychuk coming up in a couple minutes. But first, we need to get to... Toe Drag Swag, this week's edition of Toe Drag Swag, presented by... By Backscape, as always, you can use code HELLO10 for 10% off the Advanced and Deluxe 2.0 kits. Uh, before we go to the video, Belzy, what do we need to know about toe drag swag for it those who are all, listening? Well, for the most part, it was pretty elite passes. I like that. It was. Um, I'm curious to see who won this one because I didn't really know who to vote for. Like, because all the obviously the one play was between the legs, um, which was obviously a pretty impressive play. Mm hmm under pressure but the passes like i just they were all really unique in their own in their own sense in their own way it was great all right let's check out this week's edition of toe drag swag presented by backscape that is some fancy 
to give the Wolverines a two goal margin with four minutes left. Three and oh my Nazer. Look at that pass. There you go. That was this week's edition of Toe Drag Swag. Belzy, the winner is... The What a Pass by the Michigan Wolverines. Between the legs, right on the tape, shelf, full speed. That's your winner at 46%. The Macklin Celebrini goal with Boston University, 33%. Yep. So some pretty incredible passes. Um, this was actually the first time that we actually got a video sent to us, which was pretty cool. Who sent it? Uh, I don't know. Somebody on Twitter sent it. Well, good. Yeah, it keep, was great. Keep those coming. Keep coming. At Hello Hockey Show on Twitter slash X, and uh, we will use those recommendations if Belzy deems them fit. Yes. As a candidate for toe drag swag, brought to you by the good folks over at Backscape. All right, let's take a look at what's going on in the text line. Hey, a couple of texts coming in. Very nice. 780-218-9999 on this Saturday as we get through and enjoy our weekend with some phenomenal hockey on the way, not just in the National Hockey League, the uh, AHL as well, uh, WHL playoffs going yep. on, BCHL playoffs, AJHL playoffs. Playoffs everywhere. Playoffs everywhere uh big you texan says i've got a soft spot for torts but he can get under a guy's skin ha ha don't you start with me big you don't look at me like that tell us about it tom no i'm good uh <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna let this one slide it's from coach mike and it's for you uh oh you see this hey guys i know oilers talk is not really part of this show Fair point, Coach Mike. But can Sean comment on the Euler line combination? No, because I haven't seen him. Oh, you didn't and watch not, the game I last night? No, no. Oh. And uh, it's not an Euler show, Big Mike. That's Coach Mike. I know. I'm calling him Big Mike right now. <laughs> okay. You, I mean, you didn't, not even a little bit. No. Is this your red button? It's not an Euler show. All right. I won't talk about the Oilers. But they did play the Flames tonight. They clinched. They clinched. There you go. Nice work, Oilers. Uh, Vander Kane, a couple of goals, got off the schneid. Big hit from Matthias Ekholm on Miko Rantanen. I did him see up. that. That was clean. Yep. If anybody's complaining, I guess the abs on, on the broadcast in, from Colorado, they thought that uh, Ekholm should have fought for that one. Why? It was a clean hit. I just saw something on Twitter the other day with Nicholas Cronwall. And, like, the difference between Ekholm's hit versus a Cronwall like, Cronwell's hit, he destroyed people. Yes. And that was a big hit. Like, I, I won't take that away from Ekholm at all. But it wasn't like he was being a big-time predator when it came to that. Like, he just stepped up. Get your head on swivel. Sorry. Right. Shouldn't have been standing there. It was the fall that got ran. Well, there's a guy that's six foot four standing there. And you don't take a look? Like, come on. Yeah. What would happen right now in this day and age if Ekholm would have done that? Or not Ekholm, but Cronwall. And he truly hit him in Cronwall fashion. Just killed the guy. Cronwall never had to fight. That's a good point. So why does he have to? Like, we got to stop. To me, to me we got to stop getting into the situation where it's like, big hit happens, fight ensues. Right. Because hockey, as much as people complain and, and talk about uh, fighting and how controversial it is, and it's part of the fabric of the game, well, guess what? Sore big hits. Mm -hmm. And if you want to take the, the hits out of the game, well, then, yeah, then what do we become? It's just pond hockey. Hits are part of the game. If you don't want to get hit, get your head up. I don't know. What say you? 780-218-9999. You can text us and then get in on the nasty chat. Let's take a quick peek over at the nasty chat. Uh, Rempe's presence, says Penner Pancakes, changes the tone on the ice. That will be very beneficial come playoffs. Tube Sox says that is a solid stat line. Rempe, what is it, 507 time on ice, 47 penalty minutes, and uh, 
three ejections against the New Jersey Devils in three games played. Uh, Kyle says, so what's the feeling in Edmonton? How are your chances at winning the Cup? Well, I'll tell you what, Kyle. Yesterday, the post-game show was quite jovial. Contrast that to Wednesday, it was gloom and doom. Just flip a coin. Just ride the wave. Day-to-day, it changes, man. It changes. Uh, T. Wilson adds, the Avs looked lost after Ekholm deactivated Rantanen. <laughs> Clean hit, says Belzy. Clean hit. Clean hit. Simple as that. Big boy uh, hockey. Sports, All right. Uh, coming up, uh, we're going to give away the key word for our Las Vegas giveaway. Of course, keep it locked on Edmonton Sports Talk for the latest keyword. And your chance to win a trip to Vegas, two nonstop flights, three nights accommodation, and tickets to Cirque du Soleil, presented by Fly Y-E-G, the LVCVA, nonstop flights to over 50 destinations. Your sports trip starts with a nonstop flight from Fly Y-E-G. Visit www.flyyeg.com. Text in the keyword hockey to 780-218-9999 right now. And the winner will be contacted later in the show. Matthew Awanek, not his finest work when it came to this week's keywords. <laughs> and on this program, Hello Hockey, today's keyword is hockey. Oh. <laughs> right? Good job, Matty. <laughs> right? <laughs> Text that in now if you want uh, to be in the draw to win a chance to Vegas. Of course, uh, three nights accommodation. Two tickets to Cirque du Soleil and uh, two nonstop flights from Edmonton to Las Vegas, courtesy of the fine folks at Fly YEG, as well as the LVCVA. All of us here at EST, visit www.flyyeg.com. There's a lot of people I've, that have been the qualifiers yep. in the last couple of weeks, and you ask them, like, hey, when was the last time you've been to Vegas? A lot say, oh, it's been 15 years, 20 years. Some, Belzy, Mm -hmm. from this fine part of the globe, say they've never been. Oh, really? Yeah. That kind of surprises me. Uh, Not not as much as you would think. Are you a Vegas guy? I've been twice. That's it? Yep. Uh, Three times. What were the purposes? Party, party, vacation. I respect that. Me and my wife got away. The last time we went, me and, me and the wife got a, got away for a quick trip mm-hmm. down to Vegas, saw a couple shows. Uh, it was fun. It was good. It was relaxing, um, which I never would have said before. Going to Vegas is not it, relaxing. It can be relaxing. It I sit by the, certain, I people yeah, watch. I go to the pool. In certain circumstances, it can be very relaxing. However, the previous times I went, it was not relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> I've had like a, a piece of, of myself left. Yeah, a piece of yourself dies has to has to quietly grow back in the Seriously. ensuing weeks. It's one of the funniest things. Like when you're going into the like when you're flying into Vegas and you're yes. walking through the airport and you're looking at all these people that are leaving Vegas, it looks like they've got no soul. Yeah, and all the people that are walking in, they're just they're like they're fired they're up, jovial. They're fired up. They're brimming with life. Yes. Yeah, quite the contrast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Text in the keyword hockey to 780-218-9999 for your chance to qualify for a trip for two, three nights accommodation, tickets to Cirque du Soleil, and uh, nonstop flights from Edmonton to Las Vegas. Really quickly. <laughs> uh, oh, man. Oh, man. No, maybe I... Did you forget it? No. Or you're, just, you're questioning whether you want to actually questioning say, whether okay. I, or not I want to bring it up. I'll leave it. So okay. just text that in. We'll uh, we'll get a qualifier. We'll call you later on in the show. YouTube Trev will pick somebody, and uh, we want to send somebody away to Las Vegas, uh, courtesy of the fine folks at Fly Y E G. One more time, text the keyword hockey to seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine right now to get into the draw. Uh, visit www.flyyeg.com. All right, let's go on 
Word and upward here on Hello Hockey because portions of this hour brought to you by Modern Measure, Edmonton's leading provider of made-to-measure clothing from weddings to graduations, game day to the office. Get custom fit because uh, you need to look good. Business and casual wear for a one-of-a-kind look made just for you. Belzy, you and I went down. We saw Jared and Richie uh, the other day. Absolutely tremendous experience. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah, they take care of you first class, very first class. Um, I'm excited to see what they, uh, I'm excited what to did reveal. You get? What did you get? Well, I got a suit. Yes. I got a jacket. Yes. And I got a pair of jeans. Yes. But I'm excited to reveal our suits. We will reveal. There's a lot of nice detail in there. Yeah. And Jared and Richie were great. Um, they, they hear what you have to say, what you're going for, and they work with you to create that vision and make it a reality. Uh, I got a suit, a shirt. And a jacket. Yep. That I, it was funny listening to you be like, like, I want a pair of jeans. I haven't worn a pair of jeans in I don't know how long. And <laughs> Richie was measuring you up and he goes, man, this guy's legs is as big as football players. Legs. I got a record. Record. The store. That was the. 32 inches. Isn't that crazy? I think the, the guys were saying Almondo Sewell was like yeah. the closest. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Belzy. That's where all that power and speed came it's from. Power. Those big, strong legs. Uh, but uh, shout out to Richie and Jared over at Modern Measure. Go check them out right inside the uh, city of Edmonton Tower in the southwest corner on the main floor. Can't miss them. Uh, great hospitality as well. You and I enjoyed a libation with them. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they were fantastic and, and not, like, pushy. They, they listen to what you want. They work with you. They understand, and they can accommodate the vision you have or what you're trying to go for. So I'm yep. really looking forward to seeing... Uh, the final product, and then uh, revealing it. And uh, if you're look, it, looking for, like, a grad suit or just looking to spruce up your your casual wear, these guys can do it, and it's all custom-made yep. for your body specifically. Yep. Awesome. All yeah, right. I can't wait to reveal it. All right. Our next guest is uh, standing by. Yes, YouTube Trev says he's good to go. He is a uh, former NHLer and currently with the New York Islanders in player development, Johnny Boychuk. I saw him last week at the Oilers Alumni Skate. I saw him yesterday. And you saw him yesterday. Go the, ahead, Belzy. The director of Boring Hockey? I'm not saying Johnny that, Boychuk? Johnny. I'm not saying that, Johnny. Belzy, Belzy's tempting fate right now. <laughs> Johnny, I the feel that the New York win. Islanders have become synonymous with Boring Hockey. It's something that I stand by, nah. and I would like for nah, you to tell me differently. Not anymore, man. Not anymore? Since when? Since Patty Walk came no. in? No, it's this whole year. We, we're not that boring. We are a little bit boring, but you know what? Ah, uh, there it is. You make the play, when you make the playoffs, it doesn't really matter. That's a good point. This is true. I do agree with that part because that's something that, you know, when I was with the Wild, we were synonymous with boring hockey. But guess what? We made the playoffs, and it didn't really matter. So I get that point. I appreciate that point. But let's be honest. They are boring. No, not at all. Like, you know what? We have a lot of offense, too. We just have to, like, click at the right moment. And when you do click and you go on a run, it's not too boring if you win games. <laughs> Johnny, if you How were on that, camera right you. now, you would see the look Belzy's giving the camera. If the stars came up, <laughs> the moon was shining, the waves were crashing, it'd be a romantic night. Kind of the same thing. Ah, that's so beautiful. It is, eh? <laughs> what, a, what a nice picture that I just painted there. <laughs> actually, actually I, I was actually listening to you, and I was visualizing the whole picture that you're painting yeah it was, it was, kind of, it was quite nice <laughs> very vivid <laughs> um, <laughs> uh Johnny, your team is in a battle to to lock down a playoff spot they've rattled off three straight wins five and five in the last 10 this is a great race that we're watching in the eastern conference so yeah. uh, what's your sense of the vibe around the islanders and and since the last time you came on the show like patty ross come in and uh it seems like this team has a little bit more more jam and like he's a fiery guy obviously and i'd never thought in a million years yeah. patrick wall would be the guy leading the new york islanders give us the sense of what the organization's feeling with this i don't know is it renewed energy this I, uptick of energy sure i uh, i think i think it's great for just hockey seeing this this dog fight at the end of the year you got the islanders philly washington detroit pittsburgh and 
possibly Buffalo in this race for two spots. And I mean, it's just a uh, kind of nice to see it. And well, I think the Islanders will make playoffs. Um, it's going to be a fight for one spot. Maybe it's going to come down to the last like two games for every team. I think. Yeah, no, it certainly will. Yeah. Um, you know what? What has when Patty Waugh first came in, uh, Lou Lamorello, Lamorello basically said, "Like this is our only hire." Um, when you have a coach, you know, as I guess as passionate, as energetic, as detail oriented as Patty Waugh, what does that do for not only just the hockey team? Like, what does that do for the entire organization? Because I have a feeling it it changes well, I mean, it, but like, how much does it actually that, change? Even the fans. I mean, you you have the fans backing you when you have like a, a well respected name like Patrick Waugh come in, and he's passionate. He wants to wants to make everybody better. He's a good teacher. He's a positive uh, a positive person when it comes to almost everything. So it's just a a, a fresh breath of air I guess you'd call it and he's very passionate uh, and you hear him when if you watch the Islanders you'll hear him whistling for line changes I don't know if you guys watch the Islanders but it's kind of it's kind of interesting to hear when he whistles you'll see a line change mm-hmm. if, you'll, if, if you watch the Islanders I don't know how many people watch the Islanders but it's, it's kind of interesting to see that yeah, no, that definitely, definitely would be. So is that something that, uh, you know, he's maybe picked up from his junior days in the in the sense that, like, some of these junior players, they start to get a little bit long in their shifts, and, and he's the guy that's like, okay, hey, well, we're going to play a certain way. It's going to be an up-tempo style, you know, 30 seconds max. And so now it's like, hey, if you're not – if you're out there for longer than 30 seconds, you're going to get the whistle. Is that kind of something that he's, he's trying to instill on his players or is it just a, hey, this is just kind I of think, his, his habit? I think it is, but it's also matchups as well. Cause I mean, when you're on the ice and you're playing and you're in like the 32nd range and then they're making a line change. But if you're on the, if you're uh, say on the neutral zone four check, you're not going to be, worrying about if you're a forward mm-hmm. worrying about who's coming on the ice behind you you can't really see it and if and if you hear that whistle you're like okay well I'm going to go in the forecheck and I'm going to push the puck from right to left and then I'm going to get off as a, a good change so you know you can look at it at different perspectives I guess yeah no, that's real good Johnny Boychuk joining us now, player development for the New York Islanders as we get set for the last couple of weeks in the NHL regular season as Islanders in the thick of things. It's been absolutely tremendous to watch what's going on in and around the Eastern Conference playoff race. Johnny, a little bit of old-time hockey the other day at MSG between uh, a couple of rivals of the Islanders, between the Devils and the Rangers, just two seconds in. Line brawl, 10 guys get booted. Everyone's laughing about Matt Rempe's stat line versus the Devils. I know you have an appreciation for old-time hockey, and we're never one to shy away from anything. What did you think of that when you watched it the other day at MSG? I loved it. <laughs> like, how can, how can you not? It brings you back to like our junior days when I was playing, like say we were playing in Moose Jaw, and we're playing the, the Pats, the Regina Pats, right, and yeah. that's our big-time rivalry. And then you you had at least at least I'd say uh, four fights in that game, yeah. or a line brawl, or a bench brawl. Like I haven't seen a bench brawl in a long time. Like I think the last time I actually seen one was when we were when I played in Hershey. We played in Providence, and all of a sudden we were fighting underneath the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> like the whole team, every every player was underneath the bleachers, and our bus driver was trying to break it up. And he was this big human being, and the goalies were on the ice fighting, and nobody nobody knew what was going on. So it was kind of nice to see that revitalization of uh, the old time hockey. So it was it was nice to nice to see and watch. I'm just glad I wasn't fighting empty because. Like, or McDermott, those guys are a big human beings. 
Yeah, those guys are those guys are mo- monsters. Um, Tom was asking me a question yeah. before um, in terms of you know hitting. So Ekholm last night against uh, the Avalanche hit Rantanen, and I guess the Avalanche. Please chime in at any point. Yeah, but the yeah, Avalanche well, basically said that he should have had yeah, to I fight. Uh, yeah, and on the Avalanche broadcast, uh, we were getting texts. Obviously, we get the the Sportsnet feed here in Alberta. Uh, but there were comments saying that on the Avalanche broadcast that Ekholm should have been ready to fight after that hit. And I know that this is something that's kind of come up in, in more recent years, but Belzy used the Nick Cronwall example, and Cronwall would just absolutely murder guys on some of those hits back in the day. And there, there were no fights after. Like, how, how do you look at this? Um, what was the score of the game? I forget what the score of the game was. It was actually pretty close. It was tied. It was tied or the Oilers were down. So, so so what would be the point of, I, I, you can look at it both ways, but if I'm at home and I'm one of the top defensemen on my team and it's a close game, I'm not fighting because that's what they want you to do. They want to take one of your best players off the ice. Yeah, and who went after him? I think who was it? Jack that Johnson up to and Kill McCarr and McCarr. Okay, well, I think Kill McCarr came in, and then Jack Johnson came in after him because yes, he's yeah. like, "No, we can't have you off the ice." Yes. So, what's the trade-off, Jack Johnson or Ekholm? Yeah. Uh, well, that's not. If I'm Ekholm, no, there's, there's. Why would I do that? Ekholm had a monster game. So, too. so yeah, that's like yeah. Oh yeah. It's just it's just interesting to see how after every big hit now there's always you see the gloves are being dropped and guys are waiting and, and it's like what happened to just big hits being big hits take a number and get well the guy back I later? also feel that like you got to know who's on the ice like you wouldn't like yeah I don't want to be that guy that's like all back in the day but like you wouldn't go on the ice if Tutu was on the ice and be like I'm gonna keep my head down the whole time. Actually, hell, you wouldn't do that with Johnny Boychuk on the no. ice because I remember him one time trying to kill me in the open ice and when we were playing Lake Erie. But I knew he was on the ice, so I missed. And it's like, at some point, you gotta you gotta take some responsibility, and you gotta be like, oh, okay, well, this guy probably will hit a guy. This guy might hit a guy. I don't know. Am I wrong in thinking that? I mean, it's. I mean, it's just. It's not even if somebody's on the ice. It's just being aware of the pass that you're receiving and then what am I going to do? You have to have your head up while you are in the play because if you're not paying attention to what's going on, you deserve to get hit. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. I think, I think is this something that you just see with more young players where it's like maybe there, there's not as much hitting so guys don't really put themselves in those positions anymore. They don't really, you know, take a look or scan the ice, whatever reference you want to use. They're just, okay, I'll get the puck, I'll have my head down, and I'll get going because there's not that fear of getting hit as much as there used to be. Um, Possibly, and it's also maybe like we talked about in uh, the previous episode, it's just hockey sense yeah. Yeah. of being aware of where everybody is on the ice. Or when you're receiving it, before you receive the puck, you have to have your head up to see what the next play is or who's coming at you. So it's just more or less just not worrying about so much of the skill part of the game. It's more being aware of where everybody is on the ice and who is going to potentially come to hit you. When jo- Johnny, when you said that, it was like a light bulb went off. I was like, you know what? He just nailed it. So speaking of that, you're dealing with young players. That's that's part of the development process and where you're working. What is this time of year like for you? Because I know we're getting into playoff season in pro hockey. So what are you occupied with right now? Right now I'm going to be going down to the Islanders organization uh, on Sunday to be there for the playoff push. So it's good to be exciting uh the bridgeport team is not going to be making playoffs but hopefully i'll get to go down there because you know uh i don't know if a lot of your listeners know this but during the the last month of the season uh the american hockey league teams usually have college free agents and they have a plethora of people coming in to give players uh, a chance to show what they can do or sign with the team so uh, I think in Bridgeport, there's going to be probably an extra five 
five extra players. And you you would know this, Belzy, that at the end of the year, they always have these college guys come up yep. that are, like, say, seniors in college and want to move on if they want to play hockey again, and they're going to have more players at the end of the year. So hopefully I get to go down there, but I'm just right now I'm worried about us making playoffs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, I think they just signed four players. Uh, Bridgeport did, but you know, obviously, you're you director of player development. Is there any player mm-hmm. or players on the Not- Bridgeport team that uh, you're excited about that you know are going to potentially be part of that Islanders future? There is that Ishikov. I don't know if you've ever seen. Well, you've probably seen his highlight goals because he has a bunch of these highlight goals, but he's an exciting player to, to watch and see. And uh, Matt Maggio, uh, he's also another guy. He had like 150 points last year in the OHL. So those are two two guys that are interesting to watch. And then we also have a lot of good defensemen. Like, So it's, it's, it's going to be interesting to see next year on uh, the roster to be quite honest with you, because there's a lot of good players and it's just a matter of who's going to have a good off season training hard, training the proper way. Cause sometimes when you're a, a hockey player, you'll be training and you're training with guys that are in the NHL or not. And you see what they're doing. So you want to do the same thing, but mm-hmm. that's not exactly what you need for your, your body type. Some guys need to work on their feet. Some guys need to work on their strength and you have to realize as a player. And if you have a good trainer, they would realize this too, what you need to work on to get to that next level. Or if you do power skating in the summertime, like I did, because I didn't have very good feet like you, Belzy, but I had to work on it. So it was just realizing what you need to do to get to that next level and do it in the summertime properly. Yep. Johnny Boychuk with us now from the New York Islanders. Uh, Johnny, this one, because we're doing a, a trip for two down to Vegas through our station uh, in partnership with Fly YEG, the international airport. If you were, hypothetically, to win a trip down to Vegas, three nights accommodation, tickets for two to Cirque du Soleil, and then uh, obviously a nonstop round trip, what would you be doing down in Vegas? Or what have you done in Vegas during your adventures? You know what? I've actually, it was funny because I was listening to you guys talk about it. I've actually never been to Vegas without being there for hockey. No. Really? And I'm proud of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Whoa. That's awesome. That's probably because yep. you, uh, well, I, yeah. Any I particular not, reason? I could not do it. I, I just, you know what? I couldn't do it. I would probably, I'd probably come back with maybe my socks. I just don't know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, would, I was going to be like, well, maybe you take your wife down there. You guys have a couple of nice dinners. Go to a show. Go to Sphere. I love people watching. I like sitting at the pools. There's other yeah. things to do. But, uh, I mean, the temptation's everywhere. I respect the fact that you haven't gone down unless it's for business purposes. Because Belsey was describing. Yep some of his experiences and uh, oh. I've had them too, but uh, I, I, I would not want to have my soul leave out of my body. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Nope. That's exactly what happens. No, we're not worth it. No, <laughs> worth it. I could, I could just, you, you paint, you paint a really good picture of that airport too. And I've never been at the airport. Cause usually when you fly in, you fly in privately and yes. you get on the bus and go straight to the hotel. So <laughs> when you were telling, when you were talking about when guys are, when guys are leaving Vegas and coming into Vegas, it's like two different spectrums. It's just like, Oh my God. Yeah. You can see some of the soul that we're leaving. Yeah. And these how people look empty. How, how, yes, just the piece of their body has left their themselves. Yeah, and yes. then the guys coming in, like I'm going to win everything. I'm going to win the whole strip this trip. I'm going to do this. Gonna drink and then when they leave, they're like, in front of my face. Yeah. 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 And then the, when they leave, it's like uh, just defeat. Zombies. <laughs> Vegas undefeated. <laughs> yeah. Vegas is still undefeated. <laughs> Johnny, always a pleasure catching up with you. Thanks for hopping on today. Uh, good luck with those not boring New York Islanders and continued good work mm-hmm. uh, with the prospects. And uh, we appreciate you and look forward to having you on again sometime soon. Yep. Thanks for having me.
There you Always go. a pleasure, Johnny. Safe travels, buddy. Thank you. Beautiful. Johnny Boychuk uh, from the New York Islanders in player development, doing great work there. Very nice to see him last week, uh, skated with him. You know what, man? Like, you guys that were pros, like, it's unbelievable. Some people, I, I love when people go, oh, I could score 30 goals playing with Vic David or McKinnon. And it's like, <sighs> even you get out there with the alumni, guys are a few years removed from playing. And then you, you look at the people that make those comments, you go, really? You, you just played with guys that don't play in the league anymore and couldn't keep up. Yeah. And you say you could bury 30. Yeah, no chance. Yeah, not a chance. No chance. Not a chance. Uh, I am pleasantly surprised Johnny hasn't indulged in Vegas, but good on him. Yep. Um, what I was going to ask you, and I was like, ah, it's not that bad. It's because it's the Cirque du Soleil. Remember when Cirque du Soleil was in Edmonton on tour and stuff? Yes. And you said the, the guys behind you were... Oh man! There, I like it was about a that. hockey game. I forgot about that. It just that was outrageous. Yeah, these guys were just getting absolutely in the one. Yeah, and they're like, you go to a Cirque du Soleil, you go watch the show. You're supposed to be quiet. You're supposed to be in, in awe, amazement of the stuff, the tricks that these people are doing, mm-hmm. these performers are doing on the stage. You're not supposed to be yucking it up with your buddy getting smashed like i don't i have no issues with the getting smashed part okay i have an issue with the hey i'm here to enjoy the show and you're gonna talk like it's you're at a hockey game like dude shut your mouth (laughs) enjoy what's going on here that chick just did 15 backflips in a row and you're too busy yakking it up with your buddy to even recognize that just that just happened it's such a weird mix Getting blasted like you're at a hockey game, at a hockey arena where there's a Cirque du Soleil show, where like it's it's uh, a physical art. Oh, it's unbelievable. There's a story to it, which I would have to really focus to try to understand. <laughs> but I would be appreciating. <laughs> and there's YouTube, Trev. Can you do that again? What do you? You're holding two beers and your eyes are cross-eyed. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but like, it's a new experience. It's art. It's it's uh, the physicality involved with the loops and the spins and hanging fifty feet in the air yeah. on two drapes, like and two drapes, and you're holding like with one arm. Yeah, and you're too you're too busy talking about work, getting after it. Like, dude, do you see what's going on right here? Embrace it. Like, I'm pretty sure the one guy they're like doing like the. It was like that teeter totter, like, and he was yeah. shooting himself off this thing, and he went so high that I'm pretty sure he touched the top of Rogers. That's pretty high. And this guy missed it because you're still yucking it up, dude. The guy's flying. <laughs> like, shut up! I want to watch it. He now, doesn't even have wings. <laughs> Is this your red button? Hundred <laughs> percent. We're spicy today on Hello Hockey. <laughs> Portions of this hour brought to you by the fine folks at Nexar Equipment. Nexar Equipment, your partner in construction and energy, providing robust machinery and reliable service. Nexar Equipment, experience unmatched service and repair expertise with Nexar. I, <laughs> you're flying. <laughs> like, oh. I love it. I love it. Anyway, I just... I thought that was great. Uh, so we learned that A, the Islanders are not boring. Now that Patty was there. Now that Patty was there. But it's funny, he did say they were boring. If you picked up on that, he's like, well, we kind of are boring. But, yeah, we win, but, but we win. Not as much as before. True. He admitted yeah. that. So Johnny's very honest. And yeah. then uh, I thought for sure, like, he'd you know, go to Vegas here and there. But he's like, no, only business trips. Yeah. Good on him. The people who can go there. Resist temptation with their briefcase and work stuff, and then be like, "No, I need. I had a great dinner. I had a beverage. I'm in bed by eleven. Up at seven. At the conference by eight. Like, good on you. Good on you if you could pull that off, because not a lot of people can. And uh, we're excited to be giving away a trip for two to Vegas uh, again. Uh, did you pick a winner? No, not yet. Can they can still text in keyword hockey. Uh, if you didn't catch it earlier, text it in 780-218-9999. Uh, 
as we roll along here on Hello Hockey. Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell with you alongside YouTube Trev as we roll into hour number two of Hello Hockey. If you're tuning in, whether it's on EST or Sportsnet Radio in Calgary at Vancouver, uh, we appreciate you. Or if you're watching on our YouTube channel, thank you so very much. Uh, we heard earlier from Johnny Boychuk, a New York Islanders uh, player development, and uh, we've got Tyler Smith coming up. Uh, we did talk about it. It's uh, been six years since uh, the, the crash involving the Humboldt Broncos. We'll talk to Smitty a little bit uh, uh, and then find out how he's using that experience in a positive way now. So uh, a tremendous young man, uh, obviously a lot of tough life experience, and uh, he's trying to make the most of it as are a bunch of uh, people that were involved in that uh, har harrowing day. Like, just absolutely terrible. And uh, we'll get to, to catch up with Smitty a little bit. So, And w I have to say this. I appreciate him doing it on. Yeah, 100%. Like so uh, he's a great guy, and he's going to be joining us in a couple of minutes here. Also, David Pagnotta coming up at 11.30. We'll find out from Dave if he thinks that uh, the New York Islanders are boring. <laughs> I can't wait to talk to him about the Arizona Coyotes. Did you see those renderings, by the way? Yeah. Do you like that? Like, I don't think it's going to happen. Either do I, but man, those renderings are nice. A man can dream, Tommy. A man can dream. Dare to dream. Just end it. Well, Rip let's go into Rip the, the renderings off. thing. Like, the renderings were actually very nice. Like, yeah. if, if they are able to actually create that building, that'd be unbelievable for hockey in Arizona. Right. The problem is, is that they have to do an auction for 110 acres, and they have to win this auction. I know. Well, good luck. They're pretty confident that they're going to win this state, but until, they were pretty until confident. Until BlackRock comes flying in and says, "I don't think so," they're pretty confident that they were going to get um, the Tempe vote, and yeah, that didn't happen. It didn't either. happen. Yeah. But there's some dudes down there that have got a ton of money. So, like, they can be confident all they want. If somebody wants that 110 acres, like, well, what do you, what do you, it's tough to stop them right. unless you have an endless bankroll. Right. And I don't know. Some people, it's the things that have been happening and transpiring with, with coyotes, it would suggest they don't have an endless bankroll. What so, say you? 780-218-9999. End the saga, like Belzy said. Move this team to Salt Lake or It, it would just it it would be very uh, disappointing to see them go because I do think that Arizona is a, is a fantastic spot, especially for teams coming in. Like, you, you leave Winnipeg, you leave Edmonton, it's snowing. You go mm -hmm. down to Arizona and it's just, it's hot. It's a, it's a great city. So you'd hate to see that disappear. But at the end of the day, like, we're, we're in the entertainment business. That's what it is at yeah. the end of the day. It's entertainment. And so you need to find a way to make sure that you are getting the most fans in your building. To put the best product on the ice so that you can entertain the masses. And right now, based on what we're seeing in Arizona, this is not the case. And it's multiple, multiple facets with that because the owner's like, well, I don't want to spend money because we're not good enough and we don't have a good enough building. So the last thing I want to do is put a good team on the ice so that 5,500 people or 5,000 people 4, can watch 500. it. 4,500. 4,500, yeah. even worse. Yeah. So those two, those two things right there, that's awful. It's awful for hockey. Yeah. So we're going to wait till what, 27, 28 for you to say, ah, I'm going to open up the purse strings? Yeah, no. Just bye-bye. We'll catch up with Pagnata on that. Uh, all right, YouTube Trev says, Smitty is good to go. Let's welcome in our first star of the show, brought to you by Backscape, the fastest-growing male grooming company on the planet. Just got even better. Backscape has just launched their 2.0 Friction Fit Handle, which is an upgrade. Uh, the Friction Fit Handle makes the Backscape razor easy to pop in and out and uh, not only to shave your back, but the rest of your body. There's also a new titanium shave head for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin, enhanced durability, built to last to make your grooming routine easier and more reliable. Use code HELLO10 
for 10% off the advanced and deluxe 2.0 kits. Backscape. My dad is very happy with his Backscape. Gooby's got his on the way. And uh, I don't think Smitty needs one. I think he's very well <laughs> groomed and manicured. Uh, Smitty, uh, you like to keep it neat and trim, right? Uh, you know, I try to keep it neat. I, uh, I'm starting to let myself go a little with the taco meat coming out of my, uh, my T-shirt sometimes on the, on the chef side of things. But, uh, yeah, I like to keep it neat. I've never been a first star of the game, though, so I appreciate the first star. <laughs> yeah, Smitty, you are a first star. Uh, your phone's crackly. We're going to reconnect with you and make sure we get a clear signal, okay? Just, we'll, we'll get Trev to get you to call back. Sounds good. Okay, there you go. Uh, Smitty, I like Ooh. that. He admitted yeah. that there's, there's a little bit. He's got a little fuzz coming out, he's hey? He's got the fuzz, yes. Yeah. The old man fuzz. So Man. Does he have uh, his, did he have his phone in a bag of chips or something? Yes, yes he did. Jeez. Doritos. That was tough. That was okay. Uh, let's get to some Cold text. Doritos. I tried the barbecue bold one. Uh, no, I said cold. Oh, cold Doritos. Yeah, yeah that's frozen. your thing, hey? Frozen? I showed you that I know. last week. Last week, yeah. What was the nonsense you made up about that? Where like the, f- the, the flavor f- pops because it's, f- it's the frozen. The flavor pops, yeah. Did it not taste that way? It tastes delicious. I told you, but I'm still not sure if the flavor popped. It popped. Okay, it popped. Uh, Jordy Mac texting and says, "There's no way that the Coyotes Arena will ever look like that, but the amount of fans that they have, the scoreboard gives me SoFi Stadium vibes because it is a big ring around there, and there is no jumbotron." That's from Jordy Mac. Hmm. I also got adventure. Nash Osborne here that says Cirque de Soleil. Ah. Look Cirque who's not going to win so something there, Nash. <laughs> How is it so lame? Like, Cirque du Soleil is yeah. amazing. Yeah, I hate fun too. Oh, come on. Come on, Nash. Hey, Tyler. Yeah. My goodness, some people. It's beautiful. It's art. It's physical. Didn't we get accosted the other day for chirping the art community? We are on the art community side. Totally. The Nash is coming in here with this attitude of Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. Nash, you need time out, buddy. Ouch. Smitty's good to go. He switched phones. Uh, oh, this is good. Tyler Smith, our first star of the show, brought to you by Backscape. Smitty, what happened to your phone? What's going on there? You know, I've been pushing off the fact that I got to get off my mom's family plan and uh, get a new phone for quite for quite some time. And uh, this is a, just an indication that I just need to man up and uh, and go get a new phone. <laughs> oh, sounds so clear, so smooth. Uh, all right, Smitty. Uh, it, listen, today we we talked about it off the top of the show. It, it's a somber day in the hockey world, and people remember and and obviously uh, your connection and being there and and everything. I know that. Uh, you know, everybody has to handle this differently, but let's, I'll ask you, how are you doing, buddy? Because, you know, Belzy and I have known you for some time. Just how are you? Let's start with that. Yeah, good. Um, you know, this is obviously a day that everything kind of just comes to the surface and everything, you know, you think about everything. But I think this is also a day where I realized that, you know, a lot with loss in life, I think one of the biggest fears that you have is that people will forget your people. And um, I think today, you know, is an important day where, we talk about our people and, you know, we talk about those beautiful souls that we lost. And, and I think that's, uh, you know, the, the best way to, to go about, you know, continuing to keep their legacies alive and making sure that, you know, people acknowledge. And I think that's, that's always, I think I'm in my selfishness. I, uh, I just want people to acknowledge. And I know that, you know, there's a lot of good human beings in this world and I know that people will always acknowledge, but I think that's, uh, selfishly, I always want people to, especially on today, just acknowledge and mm-hmm. remember. So, Rightly so, and and I don't think that's too much to ask at all, and and uh, I can appreciate that wholeheartedly. So, you talk about your people, um, you talk about remembering them, acknowledging them. How has brought uh, this brought the families and friends together over the years, trying to to heal together? Yeah, it's uh, you know it's such a obviously a unique circumstance where um, obviously we know that we're we are bonded for life and. And I think it's uh, it's been pretty special to, you know, see how many foundations have started, how many scholarships have started, how many golf tournaments, how many, honestly, just how much money has been raised in their names. And I think that's something that, you know, really does bring a lot of joy. And you know, being close with a couple of, um, you know, a couple of the parents, I think, really does bring me a lot of joy as well. I think to just, you know, to I've seen a, quite a few of the the families as of late, and I think to you know 
see a smile on their face or get a hug from them is something that honestly keeps me going. And, um, and I think just seeing the fact that they're still taking steps forward and moving forward and, and, you know, wanting to continue to, you know, keep their people's legacies alive is, it's just beautiful in a, in a very interesting way, obviously. And, um, yeah, I have just have so much love and respect for, especially those 16 families that, you know, that lost somebody that day. It's just, you know, I just have so much love. So absolutely. And, and we can tell that certainly, uh, Tyler Smith joining us now, uh, Smitty, you're using your experience through this to help others as well with not alone. Can you tell us what you're trying to accomplish and, and how that's grown and some of the experiences and, and maybe things you've learned or ways you've been able to help others through, through this initiative have, have gone. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, obviously a lot of things I'm doing in my life, I really never thought I'd be doing or anticipated I'd be doing, but it's weird how, you know, things work out sometimes and, for me, I've been very fortunate and very grateful to be able to speak to a wide variety of audiences around, you know, mental health and grief and trauma and that kind of world. And I think in life, there's three things that matter most, and that's perspective, conversation, and connections. And I think my biggest thing is to make sure that obviously people feel as though they're not alone and that their story matters and, um, you know, making sure that they're holding their, you know, their, their connections at a high regard. Because I think you can learn a lot from your people and you can also... You also remember, unfortunately, that people are going through it and people are struggling and it's been a weird couple of years. And I think, you know, it's really brought a lot of things to the surface for a lot of people. And we're so quick to diminish our own stories as human beings. And for me, anytime I do a talk or anytime I, you know, try and promote the little clothing line we have, it's truly just to make sure people are acknowledging their, you know, their stuff and mm-hmm. acknowledging what they're going through and, and remembering that it still deserves that time. It still deserves that attention and that space. So it's been it's been wild um, to be able to connect with such a wide variety of people from 85 year old men on grief to 12 year old kids on mental health I mean it's just it goes to show that it's been tough <laughs> you know and and we are we are going through it so you know to be able to hopefully create that space where people feel as though they're you know they're allowed to go through it they're allowed to struggle is what I'm all I'm trying to do so yeah yeah, very well said. Um, you recently moved to Calgary. How's that going for you? Uh, do you miss home? Not a, not a Flames fan. <laughs> <laughs> you just want to acknowledge um, that this will be on the air in Calgary. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just um, yeah, it's you know what it's uh, one once again something I never thought I would do is you know move away from my home in Leduc, but it's been three years now in Calgary, and I I love it. It's uh, it's brought to me so many new connections and honestly when I went down there I was a little bit nervous about you know the friend space and and uh, do I have to bring all my friends from Leduc to hang out and do I have to go back to Leduc and I mean we all know the hockey world is so small mm-hmm. and I've been able to generate you know I can think of um, 10 guys on the top of my head right now that I all met just through the hockey space in Calgary and are now some of my best friends and and I think that's brought me a lot of you know peace of mind and a lot of honestly just like peace is knowing that you know, okay, well, I still got my people in Leduc and I can still always drive Highway 2 and head back home. But I know that I've been able to build quite a foundation and, and honestly a home in Calgary. And I mean, having the mountains right there is nice too because I'm a big golfer. So Cananaskis is uh, is always a treat and Canmore as well. But uh, it's something new. And honestly, in life, you got to get outside your comfort zone and you got to be spontaneous and try new things. And I think that's something I've really realized. And my lovely fiance has really helped me with that and, and, you know, just pushing myself in, in the best way possible and moving on down to Calgary has been, uh, yeah, it's been quite an adjustment, but it's been, it's been pretty, pretty wicked in a lot of ways. Uh, that's actually a perfect segue because obviously you talked about some friends from Leduc and getting out of your comfort zone. Have you been able to chat with uh, a mutual friend of ours that thinks he's a German now? <laughs> and shit, I'm Yeah, no, I've, uh, I, ch- I, ch- I chat with old younger every day and, uh, my God, that guy is, uh, he's incredible. He's got, st- <laughs> he's got stories on stories and, uh, it's, it's, I just, I'm trying to, I'm still trying to picture younger in a small little German town trying to speak the language. And I just can't, I, uh, I love that man. Like he's my brother and he's like my best friend, but, uh, 
I just can't picture it. <laughs> no, I can't picture it either. And I, it, it cracks me up because every time I, you know, from time to time I see him on social media trying to speak German, I'm just like, listen to this guy right now. Like, couldn't be the most, like, just sticks out like a sore thumb. That's younger, but oh. uh, you plan, you have any plans to uh, get over there and see him? You know, Ken, I really love to travel, and um, I don't know where, obviously, he's going to end up next year, but Germany is a place that we would love to go. We've done Austria, and um, I would love to do Germany, preferably Oktoberfest, um, but with two weddings in in September, it might be a little bit tough. uh, But, uh, yeah, I, I, I support him, and I know he's still chasing his dreams, and I respect that a lot. And, you know, as much as I'd love to have him here full time and year round, um, I, if I can make it over there in a, in a, in a heartbeat, I would. Tyler Smith joining us now. Uh, Smitty, last summer, speaking of experiences, uh, you and Kat won the Amazing Race Canada <laughs> with your uh, lovely fiance. So, what was going through that like? And I remember seeing you in Calgary. <laughs> at a hockey school and we kept bothering you like Smitty what's going to happen on tonight's show what's going to happen on tonight's show and you had it locked down and and we tried to pry and we couldn't get anything out of you what was that experience like and and then especially winning it all I will say the hardest part of that experience was honestly just like keeping it a secret like I it got announced that we were going on the show and I had a bachelor party on a houseboat that weekend and I've never been interrogated by a group of boys like that um (laughs) You know, and it's it's funny because I look back and I think by week nine or, or episode nine and ten, like I was so exhausted that I started to avoid people because I <laughs> the questions the questions were starting to get a lot. But uh, I mean, overall the experience, we can't say enough good things. Like it was truly just incredible, and you know, obviously to come out on top and win it was a huge bonus. But I think for us, we went in and. We just wanted to be our wholehearted selves and we wanted to, you know, have a lot of fun with it, have some laughs and, and just be, be our true selves. And I, I really do hope that shine through. And I mean, you saw Kat, she was a superstar and yeah. the amount of, uh, the amount of moms that have come up to me and, you know, just wanted to see Kat and, and talk about Kat is, uh, it's pretty special as a partner to see that. And, um, like I said, getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things is so valuable for you in life. And I think that's exactly what we figured out is what we're when we're at our best and you know for Kat and I to go on that adventure and not really know what's next and not have a connection to the outside world and you know just completely live presently every single day is uh it taught us a lot yeah. and it's uh it really it really does show that you know these phones are incredible but you know to be able to put things down and reset and, and ground yourself a little bit at times is uh is it is very beneficial for you too. And I think we learned that a lot and we can't say enough of good things about the production team, the cameramen, the sound men, like truly Kings and Queens, just like and incredible. You and Kat, two little cuties. And I uh, was so happy when you won it. <laughs> uh, Tyler Smith joining us now. Uh, all right. I'm glad we're on the amazing race because uh, Belzy has been telling me that he's been contacted to potentially do the show. Um, I'm a little bit miffed that he would not choose me to be his teammate. <laughs> I can't do heights and I don't do like gross food. So I, I, if I had to do stuff like that, I would be totally a uh, useless, you know what, but what advice would you give our dear friend, Sean, if he were to ever make it onto the amazing race? My like the one piece of advice that will always come to mind is pick the right partner. Um, (laughs) uh, because yeah, you spend so much time together and, you know, for us, we kind of went into it and we're like, we, we might hate each other at the end of this or we might love each other even more. And I mean, the only, the only time you get away is when you, you got to go to the bathroom. Um, (laughs) and that was, that's honestly your safe space for a bit. So, uh, pick the right partner, go with like, it's, we honestly like the preparation side of things, like. You know, it's not like we ran down the street with a backpack on. We kind of just kept doing our things. And, you know, the other piece of advice is learn how to read a map. (laughs) Because, like, you can't find a map at a gas station like you once could. You can't find a map just anywhere. And once you get that map, it is very precious. And um, I couldn't believe how precious time was and how precious every turn was on on that race. So, yeah, pick the right partner. Learn how to read maps. And yeah, you might deal with some heights, Tommy. So, oh boy, I'd be <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy would be just shaking in <laughs> yeah. his boots up there. Yeah, I make him do bungee jumping or something. Oh my goodness! 
Yeah, well, that's what we had to do. It, oh, I, I can think of two challenges right now oh. that, Tom, I think he would unfortunately be done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Balsy, I don't blame you for not choosing me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, luckily, it didn't go on, so I didn't choose anybody. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, yeah. Last one for you, Smitty, unless you got one. Nope, go ahead. Uh, when you golf, because you mentioned you love to golf, and we've seen you golf, you're a tremendous golfer. You're an athlete through and through. Uh, do you go with the extra small shorts still, or have you lengthened them a little bit? <laughs> you know, uh, my parents put so much time and money into hockey for us, and I really can boil it down to I have gained a lot of brothers along the way, and I've gained some tree trunks for legs. Yes. And I just want to show off the quads sometimes. And um, – I've moved it up to eight inches. It used to Thank be the you. seven inches, but yeah. uh, I've moved it up an inch for you. So I just, well uh, I always want you to know that. <laughs> I appreciate that. Not that I had a problem with it, but I was like, damn, Smitty, he's <laughs> rocking some shorty pants. And uh, But then you kick, you kick both of our butts at golf, uh, you and your brother, Graydon. Absolutely <laughs> tremendous. But, Smitty, thank you for coming on today, man. It's great to catch up with you, and thank you for sharing uh, a little bit of your story and, and, and the healing process, and especially on a day like today, man. Uh, you know we love you, and uh, we're wishing you nothing but the best, and uh, thank you again, and we'll catch up soon, my friend. Yeah, much love, boys. Yeah, I appreciate you guys uh, you know, taking the time and, and um, you know, just being you guys. So uh, hopefully we'll cross paths again here soon, and uh, hopefully we'll see you in the uh, Stanley Cup Finals at the you know, old Rogers Place. Boom. Nice. Tyler Smith. His LaDuke roots. Shining through. 100%. There you go. Uh, just a great, great human being. If you ever get the chance to meet him, uh, you'll know right away yeah. everything that he's gone through. And uh, even just the person that he is, regardless of uh, the experiences that he's gone through, just a very good man, young man, and uh, doing everything that he can to, to make things around him uh, better for those that need help. So that's uh, Tyler Smith, who uh, we thank wholeheartedly for hopping on today. I love that, Belzy. I, I didn't know about your mutual connection in Germany. So what's going on there? Give well, us we group. just have uh, a buddy of ours. So I trained this kid, Justin Young. Um, he works out at our gym, and him and Smitty are really good buddies. And so then obviously when, when I met Smitty through you, yeah. I didn't know that he knew Justin, and then just kind of came full circle. So Justin's off in Germany. He's playing hockey there. He, he went out from uh, the East Coast Hockey League, moved over to Germany. He's been playing there, and ever since he moved over there, this guy thinks he's uh, pure blood, pure blooded German, trying to talk the language. It's the funniest thing because he couldn't stick out more. So it's it's always comical to see younger, and I can't wait to see him uh, get back because um, I can only imagine the stories he has. I love that. Yeah. Uh, um, what advice would you give? You heard Smitty saying he would go to Oktoberfest if he goes to visit your guys' friend Jordan Young. Justin Young. Justin Young, yeah. pardon me. Uh, if he was going to take Cat to Oktoberfest, they'd obviously probably be going late September. Yep, late September, and early then, October. So there's people out there that are listening or watching that might be thinking, what do I do for Oktoberfest? Your advice, because Smitty just gave you advice for Amazing Race. Uh, my advice would be to contact whatever tent you possibly can. Uh -huh. And by what I, what I mean tent, I mean building. Um, so Hofbrau, uh, Hackershore all the different beer brands out there yeah. have um, tents that they actually put on. And they're basically buildings that host like 10,000 people. Damn. So you want to be able to reserve your own ticket to get into one of those tents. Um, make sure you show up early. Don't go outside when you leak in, enter that tent, though. Why? There's something about the air that just turns you upside down. My goodness. Uh, and, I had, and I found out the hard way, so. Okay. Take for, from experience. What's the dress code like for October? Yeah, you got to put on a you got to put on leader hose. Did you do that? Hundred percent. You did. The first year I did, did they it, have the ones that could fit those monster tree trunks? I had to get like custom for, ones. From, actually, yep, yeah, from Garmish. Um, so one of our guys, uh, our captain, actually Marcus Kink, he's from Garmish, so he got us like custom made leader hosen from like deer. It's like deer leather. Yeah. Um, ultra soft. It was actually unbelievable. I'm gonna pull up a picture here. Show it to you. Um, you can see it there. So that was year two. Uh, ended up getting the leader hosen. Yeah. And I just feel like you have to have it. Okay. Because you can't go into Oktoberfest with 7 million people and be, you know, the one person that's not wearing a drindle or a leader hosen. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Just doesn't make sense. I want I want to get this to YouTube, Trev. Do you, how quickly can we turn this around? Like put it on there? Yeah. 
Really quick. Really quickly. Okay, send yeah, that to Trev. All right. Absolutely tremendous. 780-218-9999. You can text us. We'll be calling our next qualifier for the trip for two to Las Vegas, courtesy of Fly YEG, the LVCVA, and all of us here at EST. Uh, we're talking about travel, and uh, so Tyler Smith says, hey, maybe I'll go check out Oktoberfest. Belzy has experienced it a couple of times, and we're going to see that right away. For those that are listening, um, I'll describe it like this. Four hockey players wearing green leader hosen with all kinds of frilly designs on it, and then the checkered socks. So, that, so that, like is socks. All, that is all Garmish style. So each region has its own style. So the black pants with the green is is literally from Garmish. Okay. So that's something that I learned. Same thing with the the calves, the calf socks. Uh huh. And then you have a certain type of shoes, and yeah, no, it's uh, it was pretty fun. All right, Trev is getting that. He's gonna turn it around really quickly. Um, so you're giving advice for Oktoberfest, and then you said like the most important or impressive thing you've seen. If I recall correctly, and if I'm wrong, please tell me. Yep. Uh, and this is, you're there with your hockey team. Yep. Is the uh, waitresses. No, that was not the most impressive thing but, I saw. But so. they were carrying, like, how many of these steins at once? Oh, they carry probably, like, 20, which Without is crazy. Spilling. Like, that's impressive. But the most impressive thing that I saw was when I, the first time I went to Oktoberfest, we walk into this uh, this tent building mm-hmm. and a guy stands on it on one of the picnic tables he puts this stein in his teeth stands up puts his arms out and chugs the whole thing like that was the most impressive thing i've ever seen how did got you, a standing ovation from everybody I, I don't know how someone does that that's amazing it was, it was actually heavy. impressive how did your team manage well through Oktoberfest? because <laughs> you guys did it twice right yeah the first year we it was a learning experience uh-huh so I don't know if I managed very well. Okay, we can see this picture now. I ended up passed out on a hill. In this outfit? Uh, there nope. it is. No, I didn't have this outfit that year. <sighs> who, who are we looking at? Who are those guys there? So we're looking at Kenny Magowan, who is actually from Kelowna. Uh, Marcus Kink, the captain of uh, Mannheim, and myself. And then I think it's Matthias Plakta, which is like, uh, he's a young legend, I guess, in, in Germany right now. Yes. Um, Playing, actually, very good hockey player. Came over to North America for a little bit. Had a quick stint in the AHL. Okay. Didn't really care for it. Went back home, and he's done extremely well. Uh, nobody ridiculed you guys wearing this outfit. Yeah. We look fantastic. That's why. Yeah, you do look fantastic. All right. Well, and why is there a guy wearing a cardigan over his outfit? That's just part of the style, buddy. That is that? Yep. Okay, so that's uh, kosher. That works? Yeah. Okay. It's not like throwing a jean jacket on a No, no, it's, it's definitely not. Outfit. It's definitely not. Yeah, right. It's huh. not like a business suit, you know. You look good there. Thanks, buddy. That's uh, interesting. I'd do it, but I would not bungee jump the way Smitty was talking about. Yeah, bungee jumping? No, thank you. Mm, you can that's have very it. scary. That's very scary. But uh, I would like to be your teammate on Amazing Race if I ever had a chance. Okay, noted. Just know I won't eat anything weird, and I won't do heights. I think you'd have to come to grips with your, your displeasure with uh, John Tortorella. We can work on that. I think you'd have to admit some things. We can work on that. Okay. Uh, Norman a Combine, who was out last night at the uh, pre- and post-game show with his wife, Tracy, says, Hello, boys. Just left Costco. Uh, Acme Meats is next. See, advertising works. Advertising works on our station. And a uh, big thank you to Nexar Equipment. Of course, Fox Coffee, as well as Backscape and... Uh, Modern Measure and our uh, next partner that we're going to bring up shortly. You can text us, 780-218-9999. You can also get into the nasty chat. You're watching and listening to Hello Hockey on this Saturday uh, as we roll along. All right, Tom Gazzola, Sean Bell with you. YouTube Trev holding things down inside the EST Studios. Big day In the hockey world, uh, the National Hockey League playoffs just around the corner. We're going to see some huge matchups. The Oilers in action against the Flames, last battle of Alberta of the season. Then we're going to see Vancouver also playing tonight. Uh, They are in L.A. And then I mentioned we're going to see actually Toronto and Montreal, which, you know, 
Yep. Toronto probably wins that game, but that, probably. Anytime but it'll be, those two it'll be teams a pretty can, good game. Yeah, exactly. Yep. We had Johnny Boychuk on earlier. Uh, his Islanders are taking on the Predators. And then uh, playoff implications, certainly between Philly and Columbus. Not so much for Columbus, but Philly staying alive in the playoff race. Also, Boston and Florida should be a good one. And then we've got Pittsburgh that uh, is reviving its season on the cusp of maybe pushing for a playoff spot, taking on a Tampa Bay Lightning squad, which has clinched another postseason berth. Uh, what do we got, Trev? We have Craig on the line. All right, Craig is our next qualifier for our yes. Fly YEG and LVCVA ESD trip down to Vegas with uh, Cirque du Soleil tickets, uh, nonstop round trip, uh, courtesy of the good folks at Fly YEG. All right, Craig, are you, uh, like Johnny Boychuk, someone who only goes to Vegas for business? Are you a frequent Vegas guy, or have you not been in some time? I haven't been in some time, but uh, we go for pleasure, not business. Ah, okay. So you get the Cirque du Soleil tickets. What else are you doing, and who are you going with? I'm going with my wife, and we'll be going to probably the Sphere. I like nice. it. Yeah, yeah that's see. a nice choice. Uh, Belzy, any advice for Craig since he hasn't been there in a little while? Try to find a couple speakeasies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah Ooh, there's some yeah. good ones. Yeah, there's some really good ones down there. Um the one time when I went, I went with my wife. We found two, and they were just fantastic places. Neat little so, spots, yeah, yeah, really cool spots. Perfect. Yeah, Craig, congratulations, my friend. Best of luck. The big draw goes April twenty sixth. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, be sure to tell your friends about EST. Thanks, Tommy. All Thanks. right, Bye. there you go. Our next qualifier for the trip down to Las Vegas, Sin City. Absolutely fantastic place to go visit. Now I want to go back down there. I was just down there like two months ago. Oh, were you? Exactly two months huh. ago. Huh. What? Nothing. You get to travel during the hockey season to Vancouver, Calgary. You were supposed to go to Detroit. We all know what happened there. Yeah, don't bring that back I up. I didn't want to bring that up. Yeah. I'm sorry. But uh, congrats to Craig. And uh, again, big thank you to Fly YEG and the LVCVA as we get set to uh, send someone down. On a fantastic trip. Uh, it's been fun getting all the qualifiers. Yes, it has. Yep. So, really, really neat. And uh, Craig would go with his wife. And they would do a bunch of stuff. You know that joke, right? No, I don't. Dusty and Eric. Please enlighten me. Anytime you talk about your wife on the station, you go, my wife. Oh. Say it with authority. I didn't uh, I didn't know that all joke. Right. Now I do. Now my know. wife. <laughs> oh, it's not for at. It's not for at. Okay. <laughs> Uh, let's move on. This is Hello Hockey on EST. And if you're listening on Sportsnet Radio in Vancouver and Calgary, we appreciate you. As always, you can text us 780-218-9999. And if you're watching on our EST YouTube channel, hit the thumbs up. Thank you so much. And uh, get into the nasty chat. It's been moving along today. And that's been great to see. Big thank you to Tyler Smith, who stopped by. Big thank you to Johnny Boychuk. And uh, coming up next, we do have David Pagnotta, who will be joining us. The fourth period, our Hello Hockey Insider. Also, I need to mention that portions of this hour brought to you by the good folks at Local Public Eatery, where you can enjoy great night, late night happy hours. And uh, patio season is here, although today in Edmonton doesn't feel like it. No, it actually just, no, it's still snowing. Yeah, but, like, in three days, it's going to be 20 Dude, degrees. I can deal with this level of snow because mm -hmm. it's wet. Clearly, the uh, farmers need it. Yes. After a very, very dry winter. It's quite dry. And I can deal with it because it's going to melt today. I know. I know. So. Yes. But it is definitely snowing right now. Yes. Uh, patio season is here. I'm declaring yeah. it. So go check out the local <laughs> patio, whichever city you're in, Edmonton, Vancouver, Calgary, doesn't matter. They've got great patios, great locations, excellent food. I highly, highly, highly recommend the Pinche Beef Tacos. You like the brisket hash for breakfast yep. at, at local. And uh, Dave Pagnotta, our Hello Hockey insider from the fourth period, uh, spent some time at local when he was here in Edmonton last week. We had a lot of fun. Uh, we had a good Saturday. That was we a had a great Saturday. Let's bring on the pies on. There he is. He's rested. He's recovered. Hello, Dave. Are you at home now? Where are you? What's going on? I am. Yep, yep. Home for another week. 
and then uh, and back on the road. But that the, the brisket and hash, I hadn't had it before, but I had it last last Saturday. Yeah, that's on my list now. Yes, it is. <laughs> See, yes, it's so it good. Um, hey, how was your trip to Edmonton? <laughs> because we got to spend some time together. I had a lot of fun, but I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you. Monday and Tuesday, I was a little bit slow moving. I, the flight home, I, I think. I, I, I mean, I passed out before the flight took off, and <laughs> and I woke up on landing. So uh, th- that that four hours was uh, needed. Yeah. And I got home, and I think I slept for another eighteen. Like it, it was, it was a good time. It was a it good was. few days, four days, whatever it was in in Edmonton. So hold the phone, and I'll be back. Yes, you will be uh, back yeah. to the, for what? Round one. There we go. Beautiful. You're the deputy mayor of the city, by the way. While you were gone, they had declared that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so okay. I left you guys at what, 1230? Yeah. How long did you guys go for? Uh, I think I got home at like 435. Nice work. Dave, I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah. You, I, you left a little bit before me. I, I got home. You know, or back to the hotel about five something. Yeah. Oh boy. Um, I was playing with a dog. The, oh, really nice dog. Peaches. That's right. Peaches. Yeah. 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 That's right. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, awesome. That was a, that was that was a shift. It was it was a show. There was a hockey game. It felt like the game was like eight days prior, but it was yep. the same day. Yeah. Yeah. It was a it was a long day. <laughs> it was yeah. good. There you go. Uh, we like to have fun, even though we're a, a little bit older. Not so much wiser, but older, <laughs> and uh, still like to crank yep. it up every now and then. All right, Paisan. Definitely uh, not wiser. Yeah, no, definitely not wiser. No. Touche. Well said. Uh, in the time since you were here, a lot has happened around the hockey world, as always. Uh, do you want to start with the Coyotes? Do you want to start with the bench player? Or not? Let's start with, Let's start with the Coyotes. Let's start with the Coyotes. Get it out of the way. Here we go. <laughs> they, they released the renderings. You posted the video. I retweeted it. Um, it yeah. looks lovely. I just don't know if I actually believe that anything will come out of this in Arizona. Where are we at here? What does the league think? What is the the talk after this latest uh, news drop? The the league remains hopeful. Uh, The Coyotes remain hopeful. I guess I remain hopeful. Um, Like... Nothing like, first of all, a little, maybe there's some strategy behind when this is, you know, being being put out to apply perhaps some pressure, um, you know, in, in terms of, I mean, it's an auction, so you got to bid for it, for the land, but yep. um, maybe, maybe there's some behind the scenes pressure, I, I don't know, but um, we won't know until the end of June as to whether or not they've, they've won with their bid for for the land, and if they do, then voila, there's... There's your arena and entertainment district. It's a 17,000 seat arena for hockey. I think it's 18.5 for concerts or other type of events. Um, but they, they, they've clearly been, you know, they've been planning this. They have to make modifications from that, from this, these renderings and, and these plans versus what they had in Tempe uh, for, for that. So it's, it all looks great, but you don't want to get too ahead of yourself. You don't want to get me too pessimistic or optimistic or, or any istic um, because it doesn't matter until this this auction takes place and uh, I believe we will know on June 27th the day before the NHL draft um, maybe that's a good omen the land auction that needs to happen here which is obviously a key in all of this like is it a coveted yes. horse portion of land is it something that other bidders might be going after or is it kind of just like this because the renderings like listen i haven't looked on a map where it is i know there's lots of space yeah. in the valley it doesn't look like there's anything around there i'm not gonna lie to you i kind of looked at it i'm like well this is the scottsdale slash west side of phoenix version of glendale and where the coyotes just moved from uh at westgate yeah or east portion, uh, i guess yeah, the, I mean the difference being that it is much closer to Phoenix, downtown Phoenix, and, and you're it's right on as you said the North Phoenix Scottsdale kind of border. Um, so there seems to be uh, at least 
the due diligence that was done for this um, leads people to believe that this is going to be easier to get to um, and not just because it's going to, they're trying to create a destination, but also that it's um, going to be easily accessible for the fan base and, and where the bulk of the fan base and the, the, the ticket ho- season ticket holders, excuse me, are. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that's all part of their, their planning. Now, obviously Tempe would have been number one. Um, now we're back in Phoenix and then they tease the coyotes did yesterday on their webs on their, on their Twitter account or X account that the Phoenix Coyotes has a nice ring to it. So maybe they're going to go back to that name. Come I, on. Come I don't on. Know. I don't know. I, this is getting stupid. I wish I knew. It's already the arena stupid. Says, it, it, it's been stupid for years. Um, but, yeah, I, look, I, I, just keep the friggin' Arizona Coyotes. Keep the name. Unless – Unless part of the deal is that they have to call it the Phoenix Coyotes again, um, I don't know. But I don't know. That's everything. Everything seems to be on the right path finally. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's a similar path to what we've seen before. So again, I don't want to be. I don't want to, you know, crap all over this um, because I, I would. I want to see the team stay in that market. Yes. Um, but this, 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 I believe will be the final straw with this round of coyotes. Um, which also kind of leads me to believe that it's going to happen because I can't be- imagine the league's going to go all of this length with, without it not being fortuitous in, in uh, for them. So yeah. Yeah. again, we got to wait and see until June 27th. Uh, yeah. Shifting gears. Um, we obviously talked a little bit, uh, about this body armor thing. Um, you want to just give a little bit more detail on the, the body armor and the fact that they are now yep. replacing BioSteel uh, as the official drink of the NHL? For official sure. drink? Yeah. Is that, the right, uh, is that the right thing, or is it? Official sports drink Yeah. Um, okay. is, is, is what it's called. Yeah, so, yeah, they, they take over starting playoffs, is, is my understanding. Um and every all the branding that BioSteel had will be replaced with with body armor now. So um, in penalty boxes behind the bench, uh, the towels, the the, 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 water the goalie bottles. water bottle, and yeah, all the water bottles, everything. Um, there'll be additional branding within the postseason, within the playoffs. It's not the same dollar figure as BioSteel. I believe BioSteel was around. 13 and a half million US per year. Jeez. Um, I think this is closer to the 10 million range. Um, for the, for everyone. So the, 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 the teams will split, um, $8 million. So it's 250 a team, 250 K a team, um, over, uh, a, a full season. It's going to be less for the playoffs. It'll be a little bit less, mm-hmm. um, but they'll get that. And then I think it's another mill or so for the league and another mill or so for the NHLPA. But your new sports drink um, of the National Hockey League and the NHLPA is now body armor, um, <laughs> which, which look, once, once Connor McDavid jumped on as yeah. uh, the hockey face of the brand, it was, it was inevitable. But um, this has been in the works for a while, and body armor was in the running back when BioSteel initially jumped on. So they reverted back. It's interesting because Pepsi is the official, um, whatever it's called, uh, cola. soft drink, I soft guess, or, or whatever. whatever, cola, whatever. Um, and Gatorade is part of that. But now you're going over to, to Body Armor, which is owned by Coca-Cola. So hmm. um, interesting. Yeah. Um, just for those that don't know the demise of BioSteel, it does have – uh, hockey mm. connections does have ca- Canadian connections. It, it went bankrupt last year. Uh, yeah. Does does BioSteel still exist? What's your understanding of that? For those that uh, we're getting into the minutia of the sports drink of the National yeah. Hockey League. <laughs> yes, uh, it does. It does still exist. It will continue to exist, is my understanding. They've got a new owner um, out of out of Windsor, Ontario. Um, Dan Crosby, and, and he's going to bare bones the crap out of this thing. Um, but it's still going to exist. It'll still be around. I, I think it's still going to be in stores and all that stuff. It just won't be um, 
nearly as as polarizing of a brand as it was when its previous owners spent way too much money and screwed themselves over. So um, that's, that's basically what happened. That's what yeah. happened. That's what happened. That's, that's what happened. They were sponsoring everybody on their mothers and, and uh, uh, it just turned out to be a little bit too much and, and, and all that. But and, and Biosteel will still be around is my understanding. But what's also interesting is the former president and, and co-founder of, of Biosteel, uh, John Salenza, has started a brand new um, sports drink uh, line. I think it's called Quench. Yes. Um, so don't be surprised if you start seeing that uh, roaming around the stores and, and whatnot in the next little bit. That's, that's just on the forefront of um, really, really getting out there. Which is funny because the if you look at the packaging and – Everything that kind of yeah. quench does, it is literally yeah. looks like biosteel. It might just be jazzed up a little bit, you know, a few more colors, but it's oh. the exact same thing. Okay. I think, yeah, I think biosteel, biosteel's initial tag was, was drink the pink because they, they oh, have yeah. pink drink. Yes. Um, I don't know what quench's tag is going to be or whatnot, but I think it's a light blue. Yes. Um, so Probably. that's, yeah, going from one side of the, uh, of of, of the, the equation, I guess, or, or color the, palette, maybe reveal to the other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go to this one from Ontario Moms via the nasty chat says it would be funny if Ryan Smith from Salt Lake city, just bid for the land and not use it for them. Then take them <laughs> to Utah if he wants them so bad, but Peg, pegs, you said that, well, uh, expansion money too is, is kind of one of the things that the, the NHL and the owners certainly are leaning towards. Yes, and, and Ryan Smith offered a billion dollars for the Coyotes, um, and uh, the, the ownership group said uh, Morello and, and said no. Wow. Um, wasn't a formal documented offer, but it, it was, and, and they're going to deny it, but um, it's happened, uh, and it was kind of just brushed aside because they're focused on on this. So, uh, if you're thinking about a billion dollars for the Coyotes plus the relocation fees. Mm-hmm. Um, Mucho dinero. So that's going to be uh, it's it's going to be around that for an expansion club, and Utah will get theirs. They'll be once once Arizona's figured out. Soon after, mm-hmm. I believe, will be some type of Utah related announcement. Um, it, not not the next day, the next week. It may take a few months, um, but if things move forward with the Coyotes this summer, I think in the fall. Um, at the earliest, we'll get an announcement on Utah taking the next steps towards being team number 33. David Pagnotta joining us now, our Hello Hockey Insider right here on EST. And you can text us 780-218-9999 if you have any questions for the uh, Paisan himself. And then uh, the Nasty Chat. Keep doing your thing, Nasty Chat. We love you. We appreciate you. Gazzola and Bell, YouTube Trev with you as well. All right, Dave, on the ice, we saw a bench-clearing brawl. Or not bench-clearing brawl, pardon me, line brawl. And uh, I enjoyed it thoroughly when you posted the video (laughs) of two seconds into the Devils-Rangers game. uh, All ten guys squared off. I was like, this is amazing. And everybody that I've asked about it has said, I love it. I love it. I love it. What's the reaction that you've seen and heard been? And I know you have ties to the NHL, and they're trying to – minimize fighting and that sort of element of the game. But what have you seen yeah. and what did you think of it? I got to tell you the same thing I told those guys. It was friggin' awesome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was really cool. And, and the, the thing is when you, when you look at everything and, and you know, you realize, well, what the hell was Lavia Laviolette yelling at? And why was he going off on greener and all that stuff? I, I think the mindset was to have Rempe and McDermott go at it. But then Lazar went after one guy, and yeah. then uh, 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 Goodrow went after another guy, and the defensemen are like, "All right, crap! I guess we got to do this." <laughs> yeah. but, uh, uh, you've got Keandre Miller and Jacob Truba. Yeah, like that's not exactly those aren't the guys you're sending out there. Necess- I mean, maybe Truba. No, I mean, look, they both they could both hold their own, but you Absolutely. need those guys on the back end. So I don't think it was planned to be a five on five uh, situation. It just naturally evolved into one. Um, and I think Lavi's reasoning was, what the hell did you go after my guys for? It was supposed to be those guys, and you kicked my two best defensemen out of the game, and or two of them. Uh, 
and whatnot. So I, I thought it was great. I thought it was good. It's not going to be a reoccurring thing. Right. Um, they got it over with. They said it after the game. Look, the, 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 if you would have let us go at it the last game, this probably wouldn't have happened. Um, so sometimes, sometimes you need to clean things up on your own. The players do, and, and the refs need to stop screwing things up. <laughs> so, uh, you, know, you know, just let the guys figure it out. It's over with, and we probably wouldn't have had that. But um, I say that tongue-in-cheek with regards to the ref. But um, this, is, this is what happened. So you get all this. And look, it was a national game in the U.S. Um, uh, you're, you're getting – all kinds of different sports figures, polarizing sports figures in, yes. in the United States that are l- losing their you-know-whats over this yeah. um, in a good way. It's it's more eyes on the sport, more eyes on the game. Again, this isn't going to be a regular thing. Right. Um, but it, it inadvertently put a different spotlight on – a newer spotlight, a shinier one on the NHL again. Um, and that's a win. I think – Chris Tierney, the look on his face when he saw everybody was dropping them, like, I think he mouthed something, and I was like, I don't think he wants to do this. No. Yeah. It's pretty tough, though. Kind of got dragged into that one, eh? Yeah, exactly. All four of the other guys? Yeah. Uh, (laughs) Might as well. Yeah, I'll throw this one at you. Is there anything with Rempe? A couple expletives. Yeah, Yeah, a couple expletives in there. Is there anything with Rempe or people getting put off by his, what he's done? Because I quite enjoy what he does. I look for him in Rangers games now. Um, the stat yeah. of him being booted from all three Devils games, playing just over five minutes and having 47 penalty minutes, I laugh at that and go, that's old school, baby. But has there been any negative yeah. feedback in regard to young Matt Rempe? I mean, kind of. Um, but those are, usually, those are usually the kind of guys that will just bitch and moan and complain about anything anyway. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I don't put much stock into, into that. Um, I, I, I look at what the fans reactions are and, and look, first of all, the guy can also play. It's yeah. not, he's not, this isn't the 1980s where you're getting a guy out there and he's playing five minutes and he's averaging a fight a minute. Like this is a guy that, you know, he can, he can hold his own. He can play, he can keep up. Um, it just so happens that he likes to just drop the mitts and he's really good at kicking the crap out of people. So uh, it, it's a benefit for the Rangers um, to have that, that type of player. I, I, I think the initial feedback was, look, dude, you don't have to fight every game. Like, take it easy and maybe learn how to, you know, avoid a little bit, get mm-hmm. a little shimmy going on or something yeah. like that. But um, and, and that'll that'll evolve. And I'm sure he's gotten some advice from other uh, current players, former players, and all that. Um, but I think it's, I think we're getting to a point, especially after the brawl. Um, I think we're at a point now where, and, and, and even not just the fight itself, the line brawl itself, but also the comments after the game that, look, it's over. We put it behind us now. Right. Um, I, I, there's a respect factor that I think people also appreciate under these circumstances. Like, what, what would be something that the guys are complaining about? It's too physical. Or it's too much of a throwback to yesteryear? Yeah. 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 Back when a lot of the people who were making those comments were all over it in yesteryear. So, um, you know, it's, again, like, I I don't want to see this happen all the time. And this is, like, as exciting as this is, if you're you're a parent, like, you don't want your kid in a fight. Right. (laughs) True. On the street, you don't want them in a a fight on the ice either. So, like, there there was a video of Max Domi in Toronto getting into a scrap and there's Ty Domi in the stands and somebody was like trying to fist pump him or something like that. And Ty was just like, we need the hell alone. First of yep. all, A, leave me alone. Mm. B, my kid's in a fight. Like I, I gotta, I want to make sure he's okay. So it's, it's, it's entertaining for us. Um, but if you're seeing a family member or a kid or, or, you know, a buddy of yours, it, it, it's, it's fun to an extent. Um, and it's a bit of an adrenaline rush, but at the same time you're going, well, sh- I hope he's okay. So, you know, there's I caught myself there. Uh, so there's, uh, yeah. So, um, and again, I don't think this is a norm. This isn't going to be the norm. This isn't going to be every game. There's, you know, five different fights and line brawls and this, that, and the other. It's just circumstantial, and it fit the narrative of that rivalry and how things have gone this season. And again, national attention in the U.S. on our sport, uh, like the McAfee Show and everybody like yeah. that's. 
That was big time. Yes, so, sir. again, don't do it every game. <laughs> but the fact that it happened because of circumstance, um, again, that's, that's an indirect, inadvertent win for the National Hockey League. David Pagnotta, our Hello Hockey Insider, joining us now as we roll along on this Saturday. All right, on the ice when teams aren't fighting, especially in the Eastern Conference, <laughs> they're duking it out for playoff positioning. Paisan, 11 games on the schedule, lots of playoff imp- implications, certainly out east, uh, the Islanders in the mix. Uh, the Flyers trying to hang on for dear life. Belzy tried to get me to uh, go off on John Tortorella. I would not be goaded into that. And then uh, Washington, <laughs> Detroit in the mix. And now all of a sudden, the Pittsburgh's coming back from the dead. The Pittsburgh Penguins coming back from the dead. What's yeah. your read on the Eastern Conference playoff picture? Where do you think this thing goes? This is going to the wire, boys. Like, I didn't expect it. I, I, thought, I thought Pitt was done and... They've come up. By the way, Sidney Crosby scored today, his 40th of the season. That's unbelievable. I wish, I wish, A, right, right? Like, yes. incredible that he scored, he scored 40 at this point. But it's only the third time in his career that he scored 40 or more in a season. Wow. That's actually very shocking. Because he has gotten to 50. Yeah. I know that. He's, he's, he got 51, and he's got 44, and now he has 40. Um, on the year, I had to. I took a look at that, and I was looking like up and down, making sure I was getting this right. Wow. Um, but third time he's he scored forty or more uh, in his career, and the way he's performed lately, I mean, the Pens are just they're they're rolling right now. Yeah. Point out, like I, it wouldn't shock me anymore. To say, would, I'd still be surprised, I guess, because of what it took for them to get there and. Like a month ago, we're saying blow this team up. Yeah, and yeah. they're they're they, they're finding a way, and the Caps are finding a way to stay into this thing. And the friggin' New York Islanders, who are minus a hundred or whatever the hell their goal differential is, <laughs> yes, <laughs> um, they're they're in a while. They're in in third in the division. So minus like, twenty five. This by is going to come. Yeah, yeah, uh, off a little bit, but yeah, close. They, they like this. This is going to be these next whatever it is, ten, eleven, twelve eight days of the regular season. Um, and five, six games left for these teams. Like every single game is going to matter and every single point is going to matter. And if you're a hockey fan, that's awesome because you're basically getting playoff hockey now yeah. Yeah. ahead of ahead of game 83. Anything yeah, else for Paisan as we get? No, that's it. It's super exciting. I mean, uh, what do you expect from Philadelphia? Like they've lost six in a row. Is Tortorella going to be able to right the ship? Ugh. Yeah, I mean, I get I get a lot of the frustration that Torts is now evoking into the media with this team because, like, nobody expected the Flyers to be a playoff team this right. year. Right, yeah. And they held on to their positioning for so long to give it away, even though you're rebuilding still and you traded Sean Walker and this, that, and the other. You're losing games you shouldn't lose. You should not be losing 2 nothing to Montreal. Mm-hmm. You should not be losing 5-1 to the Chicago Blackhawks. That's true. If you lose to Columbus tonight, today, like, I, smack every one of those guys in the face with a wooden freaking spoon. I'm going to get the one. I still have it from my nonna. I have it downstairs. <laughs> I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to fly to wherever the hell they are yep. and just... Right, like you guys, like you can't give this up. Right, this is now a matter of stepping up. You have to step up, and this is an opportunity to do that. So I get frustration that Torts is is putting out there and, and sharing with us, but a lot of like a lot of what he does is calculated. So a lot of that is also this is all messages to his guys. Right, this is all messaging to to his team to his players. Do you want to be here? Do you want to be part of this? You're giving up. Don't do that. Yep. And and that's like it's it's your mind bleeping the guys through the public um, in hopes that they do step up and, and get things going. I think they can do it. I would like to see them do it. I would like to see them get into the postseason. Even if you get swept. You get shellacked in the first round by Carolina or the Rangers or whomever. Um, you're a team that no one expected to make the playoffs and you're in this rebuild, and you do it, and you gain playoff experience, they're going to be that much better for it. And I think that's one of the reasons why Torts is so adamant about pressing buttons right now, because that experience you get in the postseason is invaluable. Yep. 
Well said, David Pagnotta. I'll tell you what, you're not getting Nona Spoon today. That was so good. I got it a couple of times from my Nona because I was so bad. But, uh, hey, those are life experiences that we... Right on the hand. Right yeah. on the oh, I got it on the butt. Yeah, you know... That too, that yeah. too, but... The wind yeah. spoon, man. Look out. Every Nona uses that bad boy to her advantage. That's for 100%. sure. 100%. Faison, great stuff as always, my friend. Enjoy the week. Enjoy the hockey uh, today. And we'll catch up with you next Saturday. Beautiful. See you, boys. That is our Take Hello care. Hockey Insider, David Bagnotta from the fourth period. Catch him on NHL Network. Sirius XM, NHL Network Radio as well on the hot stove with our dear friend Dennis Bernstein and Ryan Payton. Uh, great stuff from him just every day. I didn't even have to push that hard No, with Tortorella. Yeah. And you literally said, ugh. Ugh. Now he wants to be nice to the media. Ugh, I see through it. I see through it. Uh, today was great. That was a good was show. Really a very fun show. I, I want to I wanna wrap it up with this text from Richie over at Modern Measure <laughs> via the inbox, 780-218-9999. Richie said, don't forget about Sean's calves. 19 inches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tree trunks. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, looking forward to seeing how everything turns out from modern uh, <laughs> measure. Uh, go see them. Richie and Jared are great, and uh, everything's custom, and they have great vision, and they can work with you. Uh, so cool to to go in there and talk with the boys, and uh, we'll reveal everything when we get Can't the chance. Uh, big thank you to Nexar Equipment, Fox Coffee, as well as Backscape and Local Public Eatery. It's been a, another fun show. Uh, big thank you to Dave Pagnotta, Johnny Boychuk, and our dear friend Tyler Smith for YouTube Trev. Sean Bell, I'm Tom Gazzola saying thanks for listening and watching this edition of Hello Hockey. We do it all again next Saturday. Hope you enjoy your weekend. Ciao for now. <laughs>